for those of you that need help or those of you that want to know what the extra credit was or how to do the extra credit on the progressive insurance um, assignment with um, compound annual growth rate, CAGR, and RRI. So I'm going to actually show you uh, how to do this. Most everybody did, did really well with the CAGR up here using the RRI formula, the win-loss, and your difference, you know, had to be zero. Well, we did really good up there. Some people had problems down here. Uh, so I'm going to go and show you the Adidas, Google, the inflation rate, and uh, how to project and do the last two years inflation rate. Okay. So let me come down here to the Kager uh, on Adidas. And the formula is right there at the top. So it equals our ending value, which is a 16,000 something divided by our beginning value, okay? And then it's to the square root of one over the um, number period. So that's that caret symbol above the six. So shift six gives me that square root of one divided by, and this is where people got mixed up. To figure this out, you have to have a starting number. And our starting number is, 2000, is in 2011, and our ending number is in 2015. So while there's five years there, there's actually four number of periods because to calculate it, we have to go from 2011 to 2012. That's one period. So it takes two years to do one period. And then from 2012 to 2013 is another. So there's actually four number of periods. And one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people have, and including chat GPT a while ago was they looked at number of years as number of periods. So you have to have a starting point. So chat GPT used to do this at five and I'll show you those changes here uh, where they're starting to get it right. They're still messing up on a few things. Okay. And then the formula is then minus one. So that's our formula there. Hit return. And when we do this, this is usually displayed as a percentage. So I'm going to go up there. I'll click my percentage button. And when you're doing percentages, it's usually really good to always do two decimal points. You don't need to do more than two decimal points uh, because this shows you it's actually greater than six. It's 6.15. And if we do it right, our RRI formula, so our RRI function, is asking us for the number of periods. Again, it's four, not five. Our present value, which is our beginning value, and our FV, which is our future value, return, and again, set that as a percentage, two decimal points. So your CAGR and your RRI should equal. So if yours didn't equal, uh, you know we, we didn't do it right. And I'll do it again. Now I can always just come down here and do a drop down here. I can't do a drop down over here uh, on that. Um, or I can, you know, it gives me the 18.42, but I'll actually do the formula again equals our ending value divided by our begin, <coughs> excuse me, beginning value. Okay. To the square of one divided by four, close that minus one and turn that into a percentage, give me two decimal points, 18.42, 18.42, and then I don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to redo the borders, okay, so, all right, <clears throat> now let's do it on the inflation rate, so it's the same thing we've done before, equals our ending value, I need a per percentage in there. Our ending value divided by our beginning value to the square shift six of one divided by four. It didn't change on this, minus one. And we got 4.71%. And we'll do our RRI equals RRI function here. Okay, number of periods four. Our present value is the 100. Our future value is the 120. And we can hit return 4.71%.
<clears throat> now, let's take a look at the instructions here for our extra credit. Extra credit, what would the price be at the end of 2023 of an item that was $100 in 2018 if the inflation rate remained the same from 2022 from 2020 to 2022 so whatever the inflation rate was from 2020 to 2022 if the price whatever it was in 2018 what would it be in 2023 figure out the last two years inflation rate and i already gave it to you two periods three years using the kager formula or the rri function okay then project the price of the product from 2020 to what to be what it would be in 2023 if again the inflation rate stayed the same as it was over the last two years so i'm going to do this as a kager and we'll do this as an rri okay and so right here it equals <clears throat> our ending value 2022 divided by our beginning value and i said it's three years two periods so it means we have to go to 2022 to the power of one divided by two is our number of periods so it's three years two periods okay minus one and so it's 7.65 percent and we'll verify this with the rri function Okay, to ask us number of periods, it is two. And to get two periods, we've got to go three years. So our present beginning value is 103.73. And our future value is 120. And so we have 7.65%. Okay. Now it asks us what will be the price if the inflation rate stayed the same. So we have the inflation rate from 2020 to 2022. 7.65 percent what would be the price of this product if the inflation rate remained the same in 2023 so in 2023 we want to know what the price is and i don't want that formatted that way so i just want it as a number okay so what would be the price of the product in 2023 okay. excuse me want that black and I'm going to do that there okay so how we could figure that up is the current price of the product is $120.21 so it equals $121.21 times the inflation rate okay so it would mean that the product would go up in price $9.19 so this would equals 919 plus what the current price was so our answer is 12940 okay because the price was 12021 and the inflation rate says that product price is going to go up by $9.19 so you add the two and we get 12940 the other way to do that is we can do equals what our current price is times one plus this 7.65 the reason why is one something times by itself or something multiplied by one is the number and so we're doing one times or the number times one plus the inflation rate because if we did 120 21 times one we would get 120 21 so this says I won't have to add it uh, back into the number. I won't have to add the 919. It'll figure it out for me. So equals the 120.21 times 1 plus the inflation rate. And you see that it gives us 129.40. So the answer here, the correct answer is 129.40. I know that some people missed it because they figured the inflation rate over a two year period of time or two years with one period and that gave, gives you over eight percent inflation so if we look at um, just the last two years or the just the last year 
inflation rate, which is a two-year period, which is two years, it's not two periods. If we look at inflation rate over the last year from 2021 to 2022, it equals this 2022 divided by 2021 and our would be one divided by one minus one would give us 8.3 percent okay and if you multiply that out you would get a little over 130 so equals this times one plus this inflation rate okay so that's if you figured up the inflation what the inflation rate was the previous year going into the next year. But what we asked for is the previous two years. And so this is projecting that out. All right, so the correct answer is 129.40. I know depending upon how many decimal points and things like that, it would also say 129.41. Uh, both are correct uh, depending on how it was rounded. All right, if you want to stop here, uh, on this you can stop here if you want to go on and continue I'm actually going to show you my chat with um, chat GPT about this this um, extra credit so here's my chat with um, chat GPT I asked what is the compound annual growth rate if I have the following numbers and these are where our numbers 100 102 30 103 dollars 73 cents 11099 and 12021. And it figured up the annual compound growth rate at 7.41% or 4.71%, 4.71%. So it got it right there. And we could look at our analysis, has our initial value, our final value, number of periods, and you see that it gives us our formula. Final value divided by initial value times. Uh, one over the number of periods is square minus one. Okay. And I asked it using the RRI formula, what would be the rate of return? Uh, what would be using the RRI formula? It got it, it right there too. Now I asked it using the previous numbers, if the inflation rate, or I should have said, or Kager, of the last two years remain the same for the next year or the following year, what would the new price be? And it came up with 125.10, okay? And notice that it, it looked at one year and it messed this up, okay? So it came here, here's the formula, and it didn't get the answer correct, which would have been 8% which would have given you $130, okay? So it did this wrong. So you need to understand it used, it should have been one divided by one instead of one divided by two because it didn't go back correctly, okay? So it got that number there wrong, okay? Because it only went back from 120 to 110 and then it did one divided by two instead of one divided by one. So you gotta understand, by putting this stuff into chat GPT, you get the wrong answer sometimes. So if you don't know the formula, you can go, oh, 125.10, and that's incorrect. So I asked it, question, to figure up the Kager of the last two years, don't you need three numbers, and wouldn't the number of periods be two, not three in this case? And it said, you're correct. And it figured it up, but it only went to this period. So it gave us the $130.20, which was this 13018. So its math is a little bit off there. And here it is. Okay. So the new value equals the final value. So the previous value. So it messed up the Kager and it's using Python. Okay. So tell me what you figure the compound annual growth rate to be for the last two years. And it says 8.31%. And we have 8.3%. Okay. So it's right, but isn't the Kager inflation rate for that? Wouldn't you need three years of data? And wouldn't the beginning value be 103? 
It says you're right again. If we're considering the Kager for the last two years, we start with the value from two years ago, which is 103. Now it's getting correct. And the ending value from the end of the fourth year, it's actually the end of the fifth year in this case, which is 12021. This spans two years. Let's calculate it now. And it came up with the right answer this time. And so now if the rate stayed the same as the last two years, what would be the new price next year? And it came up with 129.41. And it actually gave me two responses uh, with two different numbers because it figured it up two different ways. I told it, it response number one is correct. So if you're using um, AI or chat GPT-4 and things like that to help you with your homework, uh, which I am 100% okay with, you just need to make sure that you tell it exactly what you need it to do. And you need to know how to do it. Because if we're just asking AI to do this stuff for you, how do we know the answer is correct? By the way, a few months ago, it got this answer incorrect all the time. So it looked at these five numbers as five periods and not four. Okay. So ChatGPT was able to correct it, but now notice that it's still making mistakes. Okay. All right. Hopefully this helped. Um, and for those of you that uh, got the right answer uh, for your extra credit, uh, excellent. You got some good points. For those of you that attempted it, you got a little bit of extra credit, even if the number was wrong. For those of you that didn't try it, uh, I won't be giving out extra credit for this from here on out because we just gave you the answer. But thank you very much.